All right, so what you're gonna see in this video is me working on watch hands and watch parts for a project that I actually had to pull the plug on. I put a lot of time, energy, money into this particular project, uh, but as I got further along, I realized there were some things I just wasn't really happy with. And so that happens sometimes when you're building custom watches and doing custom watch work that sometimes it gets, gets beyond either your skill set or it gets too expensive, time consuming when there's other things to be done that sometimes you just gotta know when to pull the plug. And even though I won't be finishing the watch the way it was originally envisioned, it still might exist in some form. But I did wanna take advantage of some of the steps I recorded that I haven't shown before on the channel, making custom watch hands and also looming dial numerals. So let's do it. Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. I was at the bench today working on something. This is my first set of custom watch hands that I've made for a project I'm working on. And I was broaching the hands and I thought, you know what, why not record it and show people something kind of really unique and different. I apologize if the camera moves or shakes a little bit more than normal. It's not my usual setup. And I've got to move the camera here and there to show a couple of tools and parts that I want to in this video. Now with the design of these watch hands, you're not gonna spend the hundreds of man hours to make them by hand. You essentially got two routes you can go down. One is laser cutting, laser etching. The issue there is you've gotta have the right kind of laser to do this with stainless steel. This is thin plate stainless steel these are cut out of. You gotta go really, really slow or else you're gonna fry the part. The other way is to have them chemically etched which is the easiest way to go. I won't talk about that process in detail. You can look that up elsewhere, but I've got the hands made. Now these center holes on the watch hands are cut to be a lot smaller or significantly smaller than what they need to be. They're cut flat. So these hands are flat as a pancake. You can see in the picture. What I've got to do is broach them and broaching not just cutting a hole, but making them more concave with a lip underneath so that it sits on the hand pins in a secure way and adds some height between the hands as you push them onto the movement. So you can see this hand is still flat. I haven't broached it yet. You can see I've got my staking set, the tool I use to do this with. One of those watch tools that's just crazy expensive. If you can find a good set, it's like they don't make this stuff anymore. Again, it's one of those tools from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And the one I have is a K and D Inverto. This set is in really excellent shape, mostly complete. Um, it can be used for a variety of purposes. Make holes bigger, close holes, punch out jewels. Yeah, this is a slice of watchmaking heaven, if you didn't know that already. Playing with the staking set today. Again, kind of just bear with me as I move the camera around. But here's uh, the minute hand. And you can see it's flat. You can see where the hole is here in the center. And then what it looks like when it's done, this is the GMT hand. It was flat as a pancake, just like the minute hand here is. And now you can see I've made that center hole. It was much smaller. Now it's bigger, concave down underneath. And let me flip it over. Got it picked up here. So you can see now it has that lip underneath, which is really what you want on a watch hand. So here's how I'm going about this with the staking set. I'll put the hand on a location here on the base plate that's a little bit bigger. Maybe not all the way to the size I'm going to. I'll start slow. So I'll pick a larger diameter than what currently exists in the hand. I'll punch on that, get it started, move it on to the next hole that's a little bit bigger until I get to the size diameter hole I want. There are a few different stakes you could use to do this work. What you see here is a sharp tip like this, and you can see that it's just a cone, so it'll slowly work pressing that down in a concave sort of fashion. And there's technical terms for all these things, but there's flat tips, round tips, open tips, uh, inverted tips. This particular set comes with a large variety of all of the different stakes. So it really got options just to try to get it looking the way you want it to. And then after this is done, I'll take that lip and I'll, in a circular fashion, rub it around on stone and really try to smooth it out. And then it'll be done, ready for loom. If you want to secure the hand to the surface of the plate, that Rodico is your friend. Some hands, it may not be necessary if there's not a lot on this other side. 
but basically you just push some Rodico down. That'll secure the hand to the plate. So when you punch it, it doesn't want to lift up. It'll stay flat. Uh, that was particularly important on like the GMT hand where I had it Rodico'd on both sides, front and back. Um, I'll just do the front on these two hands, the hour and the minute. So again, Rodico is your friend. Now I have another video that shows me looming watch hands, but with these really kind of unique custom hands that I have made, and I've just finished broaching them, I thought, why not throw that in here as well? This is the GMT hand. It's got a Seiko Willard, I think is the hand this design is based off of. Although I made the 2D design myself, the loom going on this hand is something I haven't done before, which is red. And so I've got a little bit of the loom powder in my tray here. I've got the adhesive, we'll mix a little bit of that in. Then I've got my Bergeon oiler, which also used for loom application. Of course, the hand is upside down. We'll mix it up and kind of just drag it across and those gaps will fill up with this, what is hopefully a really good high quality red Swiss loom. And I'm just gonna drag this across the bottom. See those gaps kind of started to naturally fill. And I'll just take a peek underneath, make sure everything looks okay, not seeping through. And then we'll do the hour and a minute hands, the second hands, they're all gonna be blue. And then I have to loom the numerals on the dial, also blue. So I'm about to do the blue, which will be the minute hand, hour hand, and the second hand. But first I want to give you just a view of what the GMT hand is looking like with that red. Again, the loom gets applied underneath on the underside. It's just a thin layer. You can see just how thin that is against the hand. It might look a little bit clumpy based on the light, but it's not. It's, you know, crazy thin. And then you see on the other side just how good and sharp that looks on the hand. And so, yeah, now we're going to do the next set. And what I'll do to help me with this process is I'll just use a small piece of Rodico, stick the hand in the side, just gives enough of a support so that I can apply the loom underneath of the hand. If you hear any weird noise in the background, that's just my 3D printer printing off some custom watch holders. That's the significant part of my work, which you can read more about on my website. And of course, view those videos across the channel. I'll stay kind of zoomed out like this for right now. I've got a different tray for this. I've got a lot of blue loom. I can put this cap on it, but I need to pause for a while, keep it from evaporating. Uh, so the blue loom has a little bit more of a white, greenish, look to it when it's just sitting in the tray, but it's a nice bright blue glow. What I love about applying loom to watch hands is if that consistency is right, it's not a lot of work, to be honest. It's just dragging it across the surface and just letting, letting the loom do the work. You're just looking for a very consistent flat layer. And loom dries a lot. It might look thick and bubbled when you first apply it. It will dry out and flatten out a lot. And once that gap is covered, it just naturally flows. So now I've done the hands and I'm working on the dial. Just wanted to show you this quickly as well. I have applied by hand these markers and then now I'm just looming the top of them. It'll be hard to see on this part of the video. I'll show a loom shot later, but the one and the two are loomed. I'm just slowly looming the different numerals around the dial with this blue loom that's also on the hour, minute, and the tip of the second hand. It's a good, strong blue Swiss loom, and this is just so tedious. I will show me doing one of the numerals and then I'll just show you the end product because it takes a while. And you've got to have just the right amount. You can't do too much. I don't want it running over the edge onto the dial. So what I'll do is I'll just tap and get a little bit of loom on the surface of the marker because then once more loom hits the little dots that are on top of the numeral, it just naturally attracts it and keeps it in place without overrun. It's going to be very hard to see, but I have initial faint layer of loom on the four. Kind of see it there a little bit, that darker section. Now when I apply just a little bit more of a dose, it won't overrun. It'll stay nice and snug on top of the marker. And you kind of have to just let it run its course 
don't get antsy about it or else you apply too much the gaps will fill that middle of the floor would close up and that's the last thing we want it's a particular type of adhesive that goes into loom and it's just a lesson you got to learn is to know when to stop don't take it too far let the loom do the work it will dry out it'll condense and it will get to where it needs to go on the surface. Don't push it. You'll just end up making it look worse. And you can always come back and do a second layer. All right, so I stopped on the floor, just kind of showing you the process a little bit. So yeah, I just thought I'd share what I was up to today. Hopefully you like it, something a little bit different. If you did like it, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, just finding the channel. Check out my website, Watch Complications. Thanks for watching the video. I'm out.